Shredders. Here is the 2022 Orbea Rise H30. I did a quick research and the 2023 is almost identical except for it has an EP6 motor and the higher end models get a second generation EP8 motor. I'm six foot three, 220 pounds with my gear on depending on how much beer that I drink. I prefer stuff like this, RockShox Boxer, full downhill stuff because I'm so heavy. The Orbea Rise isn't really my cup of tea, but let's go shred. The Orbea Rise handles pretty nice. It feels like I'm back on my Amish bike. Couldn't even tell I was on an e-bike. So as my confidence is growing, I start sending jumps and I'm like, oh boy, something's wrong with this bike. I'll have to get into it later because I don't want to rant the whole video about it. It's a 140 millimeter trail bike with very light duty components. Let's go do some mellow trail riding. That's what this bike is really for. I wish I had the Orbea Rise H15. This one's way more beefy. I could go on way bigger jumps and ride gnarlier terrain, but unfortunately, Sam borrowed my crypto and didn't give it back, so I'm stuck with this base model. So the Rise is outstanding on XC trails. It has a super short wheelbase and it just whips around the corners like nobody's business. Pure dreams. If you don't know what wheelbase is, it's basically from the front tire to the rear tire. So I have a perfect trail to bring this bike to. It's a blue diamond, meaning medium level of difficulty, but it's kind of a downhill line. It's like two miles of downhill. Let's go shred that next. See how the bike does at high speed? I found the bike pretty good at high speed. I was kind of shocked because usually little cars don't go good at high speed. So next part of the trail, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna let you listen. I don't think this is an Orbea problem. This is a Shimano problem. Certain EP8 motors make a ton of noise. The Orbea Rise handles rough terrain surprisingly good. Check out the rear suspension in action right here. So this oh section of trail is super steep. Uh-oh, not very confidence inspiring on this bike. My goal is to see how far 220 pound rider can get on a 540 watt battery. So I was in full turbo the entire time. I got 15 miles. I was in turbo, keep that in mind. The Rise is really great with its power management system. It does not let you get drunk on turbo like a lot of bikes. It totally reins the power in and gives you the range. Admittedly at a slower speed. I really like the Orbea Rise. I really like what they're doing with this bike. Fantastic, they offer this low entry level bike. We need more cheap e-bikes on the market. The Rise handles power management like your personal trainer at the gym checking in on your breakfast meals. Uncluttered wires, the build quality is outstanding. I love the colors. This is not a bad bike. I would admittedly 100% prefer the H15 big boy model. The overall package of the Rise is outstanding. The components on this size extra large H30 are not good for a 200 pound rider on trail. They are one piston brakes, thin tires, whatever. I can look past components. I usually need to change them anyway. There's one thing I can't look past, the seat tube. The stand over the bike is too tall. Super uninspired on downhill lines and jumping. It's not our huge issue because I can just go down one size to a size large. So this is standover. I can get my heels on the ground on this bike. So the standover is really good. So what's affecting me is when I'm jumping, my legs are hitting the seat because it's too tall. I haven't gave up on the rise. I'm gonna try a size large next summer and hopefully I'm in better shape and I can shred it on some downhill lines. 